hurricane force winds very rapidly as the uh, center moves on up the Is he right in the car? Uh, no. Hurricane force winds very rapidly as the uh, center moves on up into the mid Atlantic states, Virginia, and then on maybe off. It could even go out over the open water temporarily, then back into New England. The main concern is going to be the possibility of heavy rains. Now, the storm is probably going to move fast enough that we won't see extreme rains, but five to ten inches of rain, I think, would be something that would be quite common as the storm moves on to the northeast. Dr. Neil Frank, talk to you later on 48 Hours. That's tonight's CBS Evening News. We'll have more coverage of the hurricane throughout the evening on this CBS station, including that special hurricane edition of 48 Hours that begins at 8, 7 Central Time. And throughout the evening, we'll keep you posted on the storm. So stay with us. For now, stay in rather. See you later. Hugo will be paying us a visit. Here's Nick with the very latest. How does it look, Nick? Well, Corey, it looks like it will be paying us a visit sometime tomorrow night, and it could kick up quite a fuss in our tri-state area. And I'll be telling you more about that in just a little bit, and especially later on in the program. Hugo has really done a number this afternoon. Strengthened to 135 mile an hour winds, moving northwest at 20 still, 180 miles south of Myrtle Beach. You can see it well defined on the satellite. Look at the radar. You can track the eye with me as it moves to the northwest. And on this present course and speed, Looks like it's gonna go somewhere up around the Myrtle Beach area, probably around midnight to 1 a.m., somewhere in that time frame. Problem begins, that that's when this area is approaching high tide. So you bring this Category 4, a devastating hurricane, into an area that's gonna be almost at high tide. We're gonna have some serious uh, storm surge along the Carolina coast towards, uh, again, up towards the Cape Hatteras area, really closer to the center of the storm in the Myrtle Beach region. Now, that's the one problem with the storm. The other problem will be what happens tomorrow and on towards Saturday. Well. The projected path by the National Hurricane Center takes Hugo from southeastern uh, South Carolina right up towards Virginia, 2 p.m. tomorrow, to almost uh, just west of our area by early Saturday. So we could be getting some pretty strong winds tomorrow night, gale force winds and there above, maybe even gusting to hurricane force winds if it's still strong enough, and lots of rain too. So I'll be back with more on Hugo and our own forecast a little bit later on. Maury? Fine, Nick. I have more for you. For sure. And he's got a few of them already. Yeah. Nick, and we're counting four. <laughs> So we're going to have more before tomorrow is out because this storm is going to be affecting not only the Carolinas tonight, Maureen Coran, but our weather tomorrow night. And right now, you can see the eye tracked by the radar moving to the northwest at about 20 miles an hour. And again, on this present course and speed, uh, it'll probably cross somewhere around the Myrtle Beach area just after midnight. And that's close to high tide for them. And that means lots of trouble. And they're going to get tons of rain. And the winds in the storm have strengthened today up to 135 miles an hour. And it could still strengthen before it hits land, although they don't think that it'll be strengthening any more than that. Now, notice again, it's moving up to the north. We had clouds across our area today. Didn't produce any rain for a change. Just a few showers that are still out there though, in parts of Jersey tonight and in through parts of Connecticut. But for the most part, today was our chance to dry out because tomorrow things are going to be uh, changing. As we look at our national weather map tonight, you'll see that, again, Hugo is located right off the southeastern part of the country and the showers scattered in our area. Eventually, this front's going to swing in from the west and that's going to affect Hugo by pulling it closer to the front and allowing it to move up in our uh, direction. And thus, we have a possible track, this one uh, prepared by the National Hurricane Center, that will take the storm to uh, eastern Virginia and then just west of New York City. If this does happen, we're going to be on the more violent side of the storm, so we could see some very strong winds here tomorrow night. I reference back to Hazel in 1954 when it went up from the Carolinas into central Pennsylvania. The wind gusted to over 100 miles an hour in New York City then. Not saying that that's going to happen tomorrow night, but the potential is there for some very strong winds and maybe several inches of rain at least. So we'll watch it closely. Muggy with areas of fog and just lots of clouds overnight. 71 in the city, 65 to 70 north and west. Just a bit of sunshine early in the morning. Then cloudy, the rain arriving later in the afternoon, the high of 80. It's going to pour tomorrow night. Windy with temperatures uh, basically falling into the lower 70s. The storm should get out of here, though, very early Saturday and improving in the afternoon, and then much cooler weather Sunday and Monday. I'll be on top of the storm, and I'll bring you all the details tonight at 10. Morning, Coran. All right, Nick, thank you very much. That's Fox News at 7, everyone. Thanks for Check being back with now with 48 Hours uh, correspondent Bernard Goldberg at the National Hurricane Center in Carl Gable, Schlar. Bernie? Dan, we just got the latest information. The winds are still blowing at a very dangerous 135 miles an hour, but now Hugo is less than less than 100 miles from the South Carolina coast. They're still predicting landfall someplace between Charleston and Myrtle Beach and some time between 1 and 2 in the morning. Now Dan, as you know, land is where hurricanes go to die, so Hugo will probably blow itself out by early tomorrow. But 
and this is a very big but. There's going to be a lot of rain and a lot of very gusty winds, not hurricane force, but very gusty winds, possibly 60 miles an hour and more, all the way up through Washington, New York City, Boston, and up into Canada, all the way through the end of the week. Dan? Bernie Goldberg, thanks. The great dangers from this hurricane, of course, lie ahead. One key is when it hits. We have a bit of a cliffhanger here. Does it hit at about the time of high tide? The worst would come if the storm surged, that wall of water now running between... In 1954, now 85 miles away from Charleston, South Carolina, 120 miles from Myrtle Beach, people on the barrier and outer islands have all left. That includes resorts like Hilton Head near Savannah, Georgia. Brian Wilson reports. With the hurricane hours from landfall, the southeast Atlantic coastline has been pelted by torrential rains. Throughout the day, thousands and thousands of cars stream slowly from the coastal areas of Georgia and South Carolina, though there were reports here of people actually driving into the hurricane area for hurricane parties. Residents in and around Savannah spent the day boarding up their belongings, preparing for Hugo's massive winds. What do you do now? Probably going to leave town a little later on. A lot of folks have already left. I know, I know. How come you're waiting to the last minute? Well... I thought I'd catch a little bit of hat cut for there. <laughs> <laughs> Are you worried about it? Well, yeah, I guess. Hilton Head Island was evacuated early in the day. Well, almost evacuated. A few brave surfers elected to stay behind and enjoy the churning waters of the Atlantic. Well, why did you decide to stay? Well, hurricane's not supposed to hit till, till like, late this evening. And I figured I wanted to catch a couple waves before I left the island, and seldom gets like it does today, so I figured I'd take advantage of it and leave tonight before the main. So yeah, you're not going to try to be one of those crazy people that sticks it out? No, there. not at all. A similar story on Tybee Beach just south of Savannah. Most of the island is deserted, houses and stores boarded up. But at Nikki's Bar, we found some old-timers digging in for a long night. How many hurricanes have you seen here? I've been to every one since 1935. I've been down here all my life. I'm 63 years old, and I never left here. You're not going to leave today? I'm not going to leave. You're not worried? Everything I got is on the little sandbar right here, and I'm going to stay in. So uh, all these people who, who pack up and run, what do you think about them? Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight in Savannah, Georgia, heavy rains, high winds. Most people have left. Those who have elected to stay are seeking shelter, trying to find a way to stay dry in the high winds of Hugo. Brian Wilson, Fox News, Savannah, Georgia. Law and order appear to be making a slow return to the devastated Virgin Island of St. Croix. American military police units from three army posts boarded planes and flew to St. Croix. In Washington, a high-ranking federal official just back from the island talked about the desperate situation the troops were sent to handle. I observed looting uh, yesterday morning when we were down uh, in some of the shopping centers. So I would say that uh, the looting has been widespread. We've even heard reports of uh, looters who have stopped vehicles, uh, dragged people out, commandeered the vehicle, loaded the vehicle up with the looted goods, and then proceeded on. So it's, uh, it's totally uh, out of control of any local authority. When the troops arrived, they reported finding chaos and near anarchy. But the White House now says the situation is improving. All right, let's get the latest situation on what Hugo is up to. Nick is here now with that for you, Nick. John, we're about two to three hours away, I estimate now, from landfall across the southeast coast of the United States, and that means now we're even getting a better idea of where we expect the center to come on shore. This is the 8 o'clock position where I'm waiting for the 10 o'clock advisor. I hope they have that when I come back a little bit later on. Right now, or as of 8 o'clock, it was 150 miles south of Myrtle Beach. The wind's still very devastating at 135 miles an hour and still moving off to the northwest at 20 miles per hour. And you can see the eye so well defined in here as the strong rain bands now are just brushing the coast. Let's look at the radar that goes into motion. You can get another idea of where that eye is. It's about 25 miles wide in diameter and looks like it's zeroing in for maybe just around Charleston, just east of Charleston. So from Charleston eastward up towards Myrtle Beach, that's going to be the place to watch tonight for the devastating storm surge that's going to come in. They're going to see a 15 to 20 foot storm surge there tonight. And the problem is it's coming in at almost high tide. The folks that have not left those barrier islands, I feel so sorry for them tonight because they are in a lot, a lot of trouble. And a lot of rain is coming in, too, across the southeast. They've been uh, having a lot of rains recently, so they're going to be saturated, and they'll have some flood problems. We're going to have problems from Hugo as it moves up towards Virginia, and then eventually, by 2 o'clock Saturday morning, we'll be in our neighborhood. And we're going to be on the east side of the storm. That's the more violent part of the storm. So we can see a lot of rain here tomorrow night. 
and that means flood troubles for New Jersey. We could some, have some very strong gusty winds, maybe up to near hurricane force tomorrow night. So you might want to start planning to bring in the outdoor furniture and uh, you know, maybe even stocking up on some candles in case the uh, power gets knocked out. I'll be back with more on the forecast in just a little bit. Quran? Thank you, Nick. We'll see you later. And other news at different We're moving time. northward pretty rapidly, so it won't weaken quite as fast as you may think. We'll show you that in just a minute. Let's talk about today. It was 83 degrees for the high, 72 degrees for the low. A bit above normal. Look at the rain bucket, though. Hey, that was a nice change. Zero in the city. There were some showers in the area, though. 75 degrees right now. Humidity, 94%. Southerly wind at 7, and the pressure is falling. Very tropical outside. This is still tropical air, and uh, it's going to be very humid the next day or two before that storm passes us. Temperatures in the mid-70s right now across the city to uh, 72 out at Islip, 74 at Bridgeport, and again, mid-70s out in New Jersey. Very light rainfall totals. <laughs> a break from what we had yesterday and the day before. But Hugo is on its way, and that's going to bring some heavy rain tomorrow night, and that could bring some flood troubles to those of you in New Jersey and Rockland and Westchester counties where small stream and urban flood watches are already up for later tomorrow tomorrow night. Here's the latest radar shot. You can see the storm bearing down now on the uh, coast of South Carolina. It's going right at Charleston, maybe just slightly to the east of Charleston. Looks like landfall between midnight and 1.15 in the morning. And that's going to come in also at high tide. So the uh, waves could be crashing up as high as 20 feet as they come in across the beach areas from Charleston eastward towards Myrtle Beach. And again, if those people have not evacuated those outer islands, they are in a lot of trouble tonight. Winds still strong. This is the latest position now, 60 miles southeast of Charleston. You can see on the uh, satellite picture now, as it goes into motion, the system moving up towards uh, the northwest, while our area still has the uh, scattered clouds to almost mostly cloudy skies right now uh, with the humid air that's been on top of us. Now, the uh, weather pattern is going to be controlled by Hugo the next day or so. You see on the weather map tonight, we had just a few showers in the area and the warm air on top of us with Hugo off the southeast coast. By tomorrow, that front moves a little bit further from the west, and that's going to help to sort of pick up Hugo and bring it towards Virginia and eventually push it out to the east and then dry us out towards the end of the weekend. But here's a possible path. Look how close it comes to us by early Saturday morning. So we could see some very strong wind circles. We'll be on the eastern side of the storm. That's the more dangerous side of the storm. And uh, again, could be a lot of rain tomorrow night. Watch out for some flooding. Might want to start thinking about bringing in outside furniture, stuff that can get blown around, because we could see winds up over 70 miles an hour if everything works out tomorrow night. Areas of fog overnight, though, 71 in the city, 65 to 70 north and west. Tomorrow, Clouds will be thickening up and then rain by the later afternoon, 80 degrees, rainy tomorrow night, windy too. Again, those strong winds are possible. And then for uh, Saturday, just some rain in the morning and drying out in the afternoon, 79, then much cooler and drier Sunday and Monday. Glenn will be in early tomorrow and he'll give you an update on first report, so be sure and tune in. John Cram? 70 miles, we're going to have to get some ropes and mm. tie you down, mm. boy. 70 miles an hour. Woof. You're going to have to be playing any golf this tomorrow. Uh, this are time. you serious? <laughs> All right, the amazing is up next with Sporting concerned. We are looking for temperatures that will only be back mid-60s to about 70, cloudy with patchy, dense fog around the region. For tomorrow morning, more of the same with temperatures upper 60s to the low 70s. Then during the day, a flash flood watch, small stream flood watch will be in effect as rain becomes heavy at times. Temperatures will be in the mid to upper 70s to about 80 degrees, depending on what Hugo does. It's going to make a big mess out of our forecast, so we're not even going to do a five-day for you. Suffice it to say, it's going to be a fast-moving storm, maybe out of here by Saturday afternoon, so that hopefully we'll be seeing some sunshine by Sunday. But it looks very wet starting sometime tomorrow afternoon. And, of course, we'll be tracking information for you. Linda Church will be here at 5.30 a.m. with the latest details on News 4's Morning Edition. Chuck and Sue? Al, oh, thank you. Well, the windows are boarded up, the food is stored, the water is stored, people are moved, headed inland. Now there is nothing anybody can do right now in the Carolinas, but wait for Hurricane Hugo to come and go. News 4's Steve Handelsman is in Charleston, South Carolina. Charleston was nearly deserted tonight as Hurricane Hugo continued its march ashore. By afternoon, most residents here had heeded the mandatory evacuation order. And by mid-evening, wind gusts had reached gale force levels, and the area was drenched with a punishing rain. The biggest concern here continues to be high water. Hugo was expected to push a storm surge that, added to an expected high tide here, could raise ocean levels by 17 feet. During the daylight hours today, most residents of beachfront and low-lying areas secured their property as well as they could. And tonight, they had their fingers crossed. We had some property on the beach, I mean right on the beach, and we're going to find out <clears throat> probably if it's still there or not. That's a hope shared by thousands tonight in this tense and battened downtown. Well, we have Steve Handelsman, I think, on the telephone. Do we have him now? Steve, can you hear me? 
Well, I guess we've lost contact. We had planned to have a live report for you from Steve Handelsman in the Carolinas, but he had to shut down the live truck and the satellite uplink because of the storm as it approached. And then we got him on the telephone, and obviously we've had some trouble with that too, so apparently the storm is intensifying right now. In any case, we'll have full coverage of Hurricane Hugo and its impact on the Carolinas and its latest path up the eastern coast of the United States for you, beginning with morning edition at 5.30 tomorrow and continuing all day long on News 4 New York. That is our news for now. Thank you for joining us. Oh, wait, wait, we've got Steve now? Okay. Steve, can you hear me? No, I don't it think sounds so. like a dial tone to me. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Steve? Well, my apologies. Obviously, things are difficult when you have a storm coming in. Sometimes lines go down, and uh, in fact, more frequently than not, they do. And we have uh, been unable to establish contact with Steve. So, as I said, if you'll join us tomorrow, beginning at 5.30, we'll have complete coverage of the storm with updates throughout the day and full coverage on Live at 5 and News 4 New York at 6. Good night. Thank you for joining us. It's going to last that long for us. Mostly cloudy tomorrow, windy, wet, warm, humid. Then in the evening, it's going to get even a little bit worse than that. Wind speeds at times could be clocked up to 50 miles an hour. Then by Saturday afternoon, we begin to clear out and we begin to cool down. And Sunday right now is looking to be a pretty good day, but we should be very careful, especially in those water-prone areas. Something to look forward to. Oh, thank you, Storm. That does it for us. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Yes, All right. Good. Thanks, Barbara. Hurricane Hugo slammed into Charleston, South Carolina last night perhaps the worst possible case. It was 105 miles an hour at this time yesterday. It strengthened up to 135 miles an hour. It hit near the time of high tide. It hit a major city. It could hardly have been any worse. Now it's hardly any worse for the Appalachian Mountains. We may get out a little bit on the lucky side. We'll show you that in just a minute. I want to show you this incredible picture from the Savannah, Georgia area, of, excuse me, the Charleston area at 11.30 last night, just as the eye was about to come on. The eye went right over Charleston, then went northwestward and went right over Columbia, South Carolina. Winds of over 100 miles an hour, way inland. And you can see the time lapse. This is a radar. Since 1 o'clock in the morning, every hour, you could see the whole action, the, all of the moisture moving northwestward. Finally, in this last picture, it looks like it's trying to start to make its turn to the right. Now you can see there's a general area of rain, and then there are some squally bands of thunderstorms way out on the east side. Now on the right side of your screen with one of those squalls, they have wind gusts of 50 miles an hour, 250 miles away from the center of this storm. So even though it's just a tropical storm, its effects are very far reaching. Now if that core and the center of the tropical storm stays along the Appalachian chain, they're going to get disastrous flooding. We are going to just be getting some of those squally rains and wind gusts, but not consistently terrible weather tonight. We'll show you the latest wind gusts from the area. You can see where Hugo is now, 86 mile an hour wind gusts just in the past hour, Charlotte, North Carolina, 50 miles an hour in Roanoke, Virginia, but in Washington, D.C., still only 12 miles an hour. You can see the 30 to 50 mile an hour winds still a couple hundred miles to the east. Let's take a look at our forecast. As Hugo continues to approach this area, the uh, clouds are going to increase. That, by the way, is the uh, Trump shuttle live starting to pull away. It's loaded with those supplies for Puerto Rico, and there's going to be some help needed for uh, South Carolina before this is all out. This is going to be a billion-dollar hurricane in this country, perhaps the costliest hurricane in the country's history because of the way property values go up. Tropical storm warning officially in effect from the National Weather Service for later today and tonight, also a flood watch. That is if the core of this hurricane, uh, tropical storm comes closer to us. Early fog, then rain and wind late, high of 80 degrees. Tonight, at the very least, squally rains and wind gusts to 50 miles an hour if the storm stays far enough to the west. Lows of 70 in the city, 60s north and west. The worst of it could be tonight. Tomorrow, the rain ends in the morning, perhaps a thunderstorm in the afternoon, very warm and humid, 82 degrees, but then drastically cooler, less humid, but still windy on Sunday. Temperatures for highs only in the 60s. Some amazing weather here the last few days. Now, in traffic, traffic is backed up on the eastern spur of the New Jersey Turnpike, approaching exit 15E because of an overturned tractor trailer used a western spur there, and once again, Traveling tonight is going to be very difficult, especially if you're going into Pennsylvania. There could be some very serious flooding in the higher elevations in Pennsylvania. And if we're lucky, we won't have it here because you know how saturated the ground is. We'll be back with more updates throughout the day. Barbara? Indeed, Glenn, an amazing weather story. We'll have a lot more, of course, and updates on the storm, including some live updates for you from the scene. 
But just ahead, Betsy Perry's movie review of a dry world as the hurricane stormed through. Hugo has now lost much of its punch and has been downgraded to a tropical storm. Later today, it is expected to bring some heavy rain and possible flooding to the New York area as Hugo continues on its course. And Hugo is straining the resources of relief agencies in South Carolina. Thousands of people have checked into emergency shelters and supplies are being trucked in. The governor has declared a state of emergency and coastal residents are being urged to stay inland until the storm is passed. The co-pilot of the U.S. Air Flight 5050 says the pilot was mumbling and acting irrationally. So it continues to move to the northwest. It's picking up speed. Actually, it's starting to curve a little bit more to the north, and that curve could mean trouble for us, especially if it continues to curve and curves more sharply. Let's see what's been happening over the last several hours. The satellite time lapse, first of all, you can see the eye quite clearly as it rammed on shore in Charleston, South Carolina, just before midnight last night. Now the heavy thunderstorms, the bright red, it's gone, but you can see some of the brighter white starting to curve a little bit more up the central Appalachians, but feeder band squally weather way out in the Atlantic. That is almost 300 miles away from the center of Hugo. So we're not just tracking a point here. Now take a look. This is a time-lapse radar every hour since 1 o'clock this morning. You can see most of the rain is over the Appalachians. However, there's still feeder bands out into the ocean and uh, North Carolina, a couple showers all the way into uh, southern Delaware already, and some pretty heavy rain showers going through uh, central Virginia. So again, hundreds of miles away. We're looking for the activity to start curving more to the north and the northeast, and that is where the potential for trouble would be. All right, here's a tracking map, and we'll show you where Hugo has been and where it's going to be. Of course, made landfall in Charleston. Starting to curve more to the north now. This is the official positions of the National Hurricane Center by tonight in western Pennsylvania. Now, if it curves more and comes more towards central or eastern Pennsylvania and then up to the Catskills, we're going to be in big trouble because there are tremendous rains with this and also very strong gusty winds. If it goes right on this track, we'll still get some of the feeder bands, the uh, temporarily gusty winds and torrential rains, but not the steady downpours of 5 to 10 inches of rain total that would just be catastrophic considering all the rain that we've had. Middlesex County's had 10 inches of rain this week so far, so they don't even need one more inch. And if it continues staying to the west, we could get lucky and just have squally weather, real heavy rain for a half hour, hour at a time, then it quits just like that. All right, we'll be updating this throughout the next hour. Here's the forecast now for us. There is officially from the National Weather Service a tropical storm warning in effect for the entire area and a flood watch because of the potential of this system. Early fog and then the rain and winds coming in late. Some of the clouds are already into Atlantic City. High of 80 today. Tonight, the warning and watches continue, and that's when the weather should be the worst. Uh, wind gusts to 50 miles an hour or even greater over the open waters. Low temperature 70 in the city, 60s north and west. I wouldn't want to go out in a boat later on today, I'll tell you that. Tomorrow morning, that'll be the end of it. Hugo will be past us. However, a cold front's approaching. Could be a thunderstorm during the afternoon, but quite warm and humid, 82. Once that front comes by, that's a nasty front. That's going to drop the temperature into the 60s, even with sunshine on Sunday with a lot of wind. So a very blustery weekend. We start off with strong southerly winds and southeasterly winds tonight and end up with strong northwesterly winds by Sunday. Big changes in the weather here. Now, in traffic, southbound eastern spur of the New Jersey Turnpike. We didn't find any broken windows. I mean, we were looking for it. I don't want to wish ill for anyone, but we were looking for that. We couldn't even find branches on the ground. What it does look like is there may be some beach erosion. Um, there, there were, were still very high waves, and we hear that there's beach erosion. Um, it's hard to tell just by looking at it. But other than that, there isn't any real serious damage. But despite that, despite the fact that when we went over to the islands and it seemed like the homes are all in good shape, they're not letting people back. As yeah. Mark said, they're, they're waiting. Part of it's bureaucracy, you know, they're having the mayor say it's okay. The other thing is just to make sure that everything's okay, checking everything out. We traveled around for a couple of hours early, early this morning, sort of on, on damage patrol. And, and our, where we looked, is pretty much what, what you found. We really didn't uh, find anything to speak of. A couple of branches down. And I think the people in Wilmington are, are just, uh, you know, thanking their lucky stars this morning that it's all turned out as well as it did. Well, some of the people told me last night that they've seen thunderstorms that were worse than what happened last night. And it's really surprising when you think about a hurricane. You expect much more, at least some trees down. And we just didn't see it. Aaron Moriarty, thanks very much. Thanks, Gary. We'll be back.
Fresh and Natural brand is 120. It not only knocked signs like this down, but a number of buildings had their roofs torn off, other buildings collapsed. We've had power outages almost over the entire Charleston area, and there's been extensive flooding. At this point, though, we don't have any confirmed ideas just how many injuries may be attributed to this hurricane in this area. But as this day progresses, we'll be better to assess the damage and any injuries involved in Hurricane Hugo. And we will be here. Reporting from Charleston, South Carolina, I'm Mark Schumacher, Channel 2 News. Now, Hugo's weak remnants will still affect us today and tonight. Flood warnings and a tropical storm that heads northward on course. So in land course, there are reports of three people killed, but those have not yet been confirmed. The devastation in Charleston was extensive, with many buildings damaged and power and communication systems knocked out. Next, Hugo is expected to continue northwards along the Appalachians, arriving in the New York area tonight, with heavy rain and more flooding possible. Take a look at these pictures while well, you just saw them photographed from an aircraft as it passed through the eye of the storm. Here they come. And U.S. troops are now in St. Croix to stop looting and restore order there. More soldiers are on the way. The Irish Republican Army has claimed responsibility for this morning's deadly explosion at the Royal Marines Barracks in d -Lex. on the weather and traffic. Glenn? Right, thanks, Barbara. We've got the latest radar in, uh, continuing our time lapse over the last several hours since 1 o'clock in the morning, and we'll show you that right now. You can see quite clearly at the beginning of the time lapse right there, the eye of Hurricane Hugo at that time. Now it's Tropical Storm Hugo. Still the bright yellow is circled there in North Carolina, indicating where the center is. Now it's still got a pretty good circulation, and winds are quite strong still with a lot of gusts. But you can see the rain is pretty much concentrated in one area. It's a large area, but it's one area. And that area is going to have to start turning if it's going to come over here and give us the kind of flooding that the has been possible if the thing came right over us. You can see on the eastern side spiral bands of showers and thunderstorms and that's where you get pretty strong wind gusts. Look at the uh, right hand side of your screen with those spiral bands of rain. Well in those spiral bands are having wind gusts of uh, 40 miles an hour. 300 miles away from the center of Hugo while it's only a tropical storm. These are the latest Peak gusts just in the past hour now, 55 miles an hour at Charlotte, North Carolina, and at Greensboro, for up to 45 miles an hour now at Roanoke. Now, if this thing does not make that sharp right turn, we are not going to get the steady torrential downpours of 5 to 10 inches that these uh, hurricanes can sometimes do. And that may not be happening. It may be continuing to ride up the Appalachians, and we'll just get some of those spiral band rains and brief wind gusts. Here's the forecast, and you'll see that the uh, National Weather Service has issued a tropical storm warning for the entire area and also a flood watch. The fog lifting and uh, rain starting to move in later on. There's still some showers already in Washington, D.C. and uh, Southern Maryland. High temperature today, 80 degrees. Now tonight, the warning uh, for the tropical storm and the flood watch continue. Some periods of heavy rain or thunderstorms with a brief gust in some areas to 50 plus. We're not talking about a steady torrential rain and continuous 50 mile an hour winds unless the thing comes right at us. A five day forecast, the changing day tomorrow as, her, as Hugo goes by, 82 with possible thunderstorm and then drastically cooler and drier as we head into Sunday and Monday. Barbara? And Glenn, thank you. The people I spent the night with, Joel Bennett. How are you? Hi. Were you ever frightened last night? A little bit. How about Kason? Was she quiet? No, he, he slept through it. You know, and I was surprised. I thought most of the children were very good last night, didn't you? Yeah, but then some was yelling, too, just because they didn't know what was going on. But he slept through most of it. You're a little surprised when you come out here and you saw our truck turned over here. Yeah. You're seeing some of the damage for the first time, aren't you? Yeah. Don't you want to go run home right now? Yeah. Are you a little nervous about what you're going to find at home? No, not really. Um, no, not really. What did you tell me about last night 
when you suffer in here. <laughs> it was a dangerous situation when you were in the gym last night, actually, at 11.25, and that's when I actually was nervous, but you didn't know I was nervous. I'm surprised. And you weren't nervous at all? Not while I seen you. <laughs> well, let me tell you, we were nervous about 11.25 when you were in that gymnasium with that flat metal roof, oh, yeah. and we felt a lot better when everybody was moved by the civil defense right into the hall. But nice to see you, and when you go home, I, I wish you the best of luck, and I hope you had no damage. Okay, thank all right. you. Bye, Kishon. <laughs> At least this is a happy story here, and we'll be back right after this. The fury of Hugo slamming into South Carolina, and now, finally, the worst is over. Good afternoon. Carol is off today. I'm Brian Williams, and here's what's happening. Hurricane Hugo is no more. Now it's a tropical storm, and it's headed north. Landfall last night was as destructive as everyone predicted. Hugo's 135-mile-an-hour winds left five people dead in South Carolina. Channel 2's Mark Schumacher rode out the storm last night right in its center in Charleston. He joins us now with a live update. Mark? Well, Brian, this is really kind of wild. Right now, we've got clear skies. I'm in a, under the warm sun. I've got short sleeves on. And only a few hours ago, this area was absolutely battered by Hurricane Hugo. And I've got to tell you, it's absolutely the worst storm I've ever had to endure. And I've covered a couple of other hurricanes over the years. Let me give you an update where we are right now. First of all, there are continued power outages. This area here also without power. The streets that aren't flooded are either filled with trees or power lines. It's really a mess out there. It's hard to navigate any of the streets in this area. Also, the barrier islands on the Atlantic are isolated. One of the main bridges to those areas is out. We're not sure exactly what the damage in those areas is like. No one can get out there, at least not yet. Now, we may not be able to get out there, but let me tell you something. These pictures you're going to see will show you that the damage and devastation are all over the place. You don't have to go very far. Hugo's power and brute strength lived up to its advanced billing. The Class 4 hurricane ripped onto shore after midnight and turned Charleston upside down. This morning, everywhere you look, there is damage, there is debris. Roofs torn off buildings, windows blown out. You've got cinder block buildings blown down and around in the back. You've got plate glass windows and roofs missing. I, I didn't think it would do all this. What wasn't pounded by 120 mile per hour winds was washed out by a high tide 15 feet above normal. Downtown Charleston is a mess, and there have been reports of looting. Right now we've got officers that are located throughout the business district. We are uh, have an officer approximately every block. We're just trying to keep people completely out of the area so we can get control over it. The National Guard will soon move in to help out local police. The city is in disarray, and so is Charleston's Emergency Preparedness Center. We're behind. The reason we're behind is last night, the uh, hurricane for our command center. We lost it. South Carolina Electric and Gas has own problems. The utility service headquarters is in shambles. The repair yard is in disrepair. And more than half of Charleston County is without power. When the hurricane was at its peak last night, myself and the Channel 2 crew took refuge inside the lobby of this Ramada Inn. But as you can see, that didn't mean we were out of danger. The huge sign here was blown down and it came crashing through the roof of the lobby. Fortunately, no one was hurt. So far, three deaths have been attributed to Hugo, a light death toll considering the devastation left in the hurricane's path. Now, hopefully later this afternoon, they're going to have some damage estimates on just exactly the type of damage this hurricane has done here. No one really can even fathom that at this point. We will have more for you from Charleston, South Carolina, coming up at 5 and 6. I'm Mark Schumacher reporting live. Back to you, Brian. All right, Mark. Thank you very much. Dr. Frank Field has been following the hurricane's path from the beginning. He's here now with the very latest. Frank? Brian, it takes a lot of courage to sit right there smack in the path of a hurricane, and this is what was happening, and there's where Mark was sitting. There is the eye of the hurricane last night at 6 o'clock, expected to move right in that direction. Well, it did. The eye passed directly over Charleston with winds of 130 miles an hour in gusts. It may have been stronger because there's no way of clocking at every point around the eye of the storm itself. The path has continues as expected into the inland areas and this morning the storm was moving in the eye has disappeared charleston sitting right on the very fringe on the back fringe of the storm itself as the storm continues to move in this is the very latest position 
As you can see, the reason Mark is enjoying that bright sunshine that he just reported live is he's way back here now. The tail of the storm is gone. The eye itself now with winds of 50 miles an hour and torrential rains. That eye has been moving northward. It is moving northward at 30 miles an hour. The winds around the center are 50 miles an hour. And of course, everyone is saying, what will it do to the metropolitan area? It is no longer a hurricane. It's now a tropical storm. That tropical storm with winds of 50 miles an hour with some strong gusts will continue to diminish, but it will cause a great deal of inland damage because as it moves to the north, the sweep of air that's coming in, heavy rain. You can practically go outside now anywhere from the eye of the storm right up into New England, squeeze the air, and you'll have water. That's how moist the air is, which means five to six inches of rain flooding in the interior sections. It will take about three or four hours before the leading edge of the rain moves up through the mid-Atlantic area. Then the next change will be this. The eye continues to move northward, washing out a large area of wet weather. That means an awful lot of flooding over most of the northeastern part of the country. We also takes a lot of courage to go into a storm itself, fly into it, and I think we have a report on that coming up. Brian? Frank, we do. Uh, we're now going to take you on an incredible journey, literally through the eye of that storm, as Frank mentioned. Channel 2 meteorologist John Bolaris was aboard a research aircraft that tracked Hugo from the inside of the storm out. He now has an exclusive report with some stunning pictures. John joins us now from the National Hurricane Center in Coral Gables, Florida. John? All right, thank you, Brian. Last night, it was a totally different story. At 11 o'clock last night, I was located about 30 miles off the Charleston coast, but 10,000 feet above. I was with a group of men and scientists, better known as the Hurricane Hunters. Now, we were there about 30 miles off the coast. I was able to get through via the phone back to Ernie and Michelle exclusively and live from the eye of Hugo as Hugo was about to make landfall right off the coast of Charleston, South Carolina. Now, my crack cameraman, Jim Cordemine, maybe a little bit crazy, he was there with me as well, and we actually have some nice footage here to show you. And I'll have a little description, and we're going to take you eyeball to eyeball with Hurricane Hugo as uh, he was 11 o'clock last night. We're seeing in the very center of Hurricane Hugo, better known as the eye. It's an unbelievable experience. Just looking at it, you see like a wall of clouds encircling, uh, completely encompassing the plane. You can see the bands of clouds wrapping around, forming the eye around the, we call that the wall. We're getting bumped around a little bit, but it's normally not too bad in the eye itself. But it's an unbelievable sight. You can see clear down to the ocean. You can see the rough, chaotic seas. It's uh, <laughs> I never had this kind of a feeling before. We had some turbulence just before we went into the eye. Wind speeds were unofficially clocked on the southern edge of 120 miles per hour. The seas are extremely rough. You go, a very powerful storm. Category three, borderline category four at this time. We, had, we don't have the official readings on Hugo yet. We're still in the eye now. As we approach the wall of the uh, band of clouds around the eye, we may be able to pick up some convective activity, thunderstorms, and get some flashes of lightning as we get closer to the uh, northern edge of this eye. Right now, we're pretty much in the center. As I look above as well, I see nothing but clear skies. We're flying at an altitude about 10,000 feet and we're eyeball to eyeball with Hurricane Hugo. Okay. All right, Brian, we're going to have more stories, a complete story on Hugo. We have some more visual footage of Hugo. We're going to show that to you at 5 and again at 6 o'clock. Back to you, Brian, in New York. Fascinating pictures. Thank you, John. When the rain does get here, it will make our already waterlogged area even more... Right now it is cloudy in Midtown. Uh, White Plains has some light rain. There are bands of showers, and we're right on the very extreme edge of what's left of Hugo, a huge, wet, sprawling area, the 94% humidity, southeasterly winds, and we're getting a couple of good gusts of up to 25 miles an hour, and our weather for the weekend is looking more optimistic, and a little bit of cool air will be moving our way. Here's what's happening, and you can see on the satellite picture, quite a far cry from yesterday's picture of the huge storm moving up into the southeast, down in the Carolinas, the sun is shining, they're beginning to recover from the damage. Big swirling mass of clouds, and that wet weather system is traveling right along through the Appalachians and heading northwestward. So we're right on the very fringe, getting the clouds and some of the showers, and maybe tomorrow a couple of thunder showers. But the worst of it is moving right up to the west of us, through western New York and Pennsylvania. And that is quite a change, because what we have now is this. 
The storm itself heading up and away from us, most of the wet weather, the heavy rains in the interior sections, we're in the clouds now, right on the fringe of it, and so there's still a chance of some flood uh, problems in northern New Jersey where the ground is saturated, and here's the change that we're looking for. What's left of Hugo heading northeastward, and surprisingly, most of the heavy showers and thunderstorms that will come tomorrow will come from another direction. What's left of Hugo passes northeastward, cooler air is settling in, that's our fall weather, and by tomorrow, the leading edge of the cold air will collide with what's left of Hugo. That will trigger off widely scattered showers and thunderstorms, and some will be quite heavy, and that will make quite a difference. And then cool, dry air for Sunday. The forecast for the metropolitan area tonight, we expect that the rain, and mostly in the form of showers, will be off and on. Temperatures continue quite mild. Uh, winds out of the southeast. Uh, tomorrow, we expect to get into a shifting pattern of winds, taking off from south initially, then into northwest. And once the showers and thunderstorms move through the, and later tomorrow, cooler, drier air moves in in time for Sunday. Agile yeah. Chimp still causing some problems. Take a look at what's going on as uh, we check out his latest location. 39 north, 82 west, 50 mile per hour winds moving northwesterly at 30 miles per hour. As far as our current statistics are concerned here, well, winds are picking up, and that is a direct result of Hurricane Hugo. Our high for the day got up to 78 degrees, the low 73. We had two hundredths of an inch of rain, but some areas have picked up a lot more than that, especially north and west of New York City. We've had six inches of rain or more so far for the month. Sunrise, 644, and the sunset at 652. And as we mentioned, it is very, very windy out there. Taking a look at our current statistics for you, we'll show you that right now temperatures are still in the 70s, 76 and cloudy at Central Park. But look at the winds gusting up to 29 miles per hour out of the south, 29.86 falling the barometer, 91% the relative humidity, temperatures in the mid to upper 70s, and a check of our exclusive live color radar. You're starting to see some rain develop from Hugo. Heavy stuff in northwestern New Jersey, Rockland and Westchester County, Fairfield, Connecticut, and the north shore of Long Island. Now, as we take a look at the latest satellite, you'll see quite a bit of cloudiness to our west. That is Hurricane Hugo. The tropical storm now moving from West Virginia, crossing over Erie, Pennsylvania, on into western New York, and it will get off like a rocket on into New England. But a big area of high pressure is off to the east, and between Hugo and the high pressure, a lot of very strong southerly winds tonight. Tropical force storm warnings are up as far as winds for the coast. And with rain, it's going to be a little messy out there. There could be some flooding with some heavier rain especially. We'll take a look at it in detail, bring you the five days ahead, and see what the weekend holds when we come back on New Live at 5. Almost at News 4. Hip, hip, hooray. Club Carrillo is coming to St. Martin. I'm Mario assisted me as much as he could. I told this girl, don't worry. It passes, it's sad, and it's, it's all kids that are doing it, too. At midday, units of the South Carolina National Guard, already here to assist in yesterday's evacuation, took up positions downtown and staged a show of strength. A six o'clock curfew has been declared by the mayor, but the downtown at this hour is clogged with sightseers. There are actually a few guardsmen and cops in sight, so it's not clear if that curfew will be enforced or even if it's needed. Widespread looting has not been reported. Reporting live from Charleston, South Carolina, this is Steve Handelsman reporting. Let's go up now, uh, up the coast a bit, to Myrtle Beach, where Jim Upshaw is standing by. Jim? There's been one death in a fire overnight here in Myrtle Beach, uh, South Carolina, but other than that, officials report no serious uh, human effects during the storm period. Now, some of the people streaming back into Myrtle Beach on this highway behind me may disagree when they see the widespread destruction in the beach resort town. We've seen buildings battered. We've seen signs and other things torn off of businesses, lots of windows out, some even more serious undermining of structures in that town. Public works broken down in many cases, water contaminated, many serious problems. It's been a day of suspense and even anger here, pointing towards some unhappy discoveries. What happened to Myrtle Beach was not the worst Hurricane Hugo delivered, but a terrible sight nonetheless for owners of beach property. For most of today, they could not witness this damage because they were held back miles away by police who said downed power lines and hazardous materials made re-entering the town too risky, yet admitted families with military or other special status, as some homeowners grew increasingly angry. Yeah, we hear reports that 
you know, you can't, the streets are impassable and there's lines down. Well, that's not true because they're letting too many people in. I think it's outrageous. Outrageous. We live, I own property there. I don't care why I can't go home. News crews, too, were held back until offered a brief tour aboard a National Guard truck. The ride brought us to Garden City, a few miles south of Myrtle Beach, and a strip of condominiums torn and battered by Hugo. Here, graphic proof of the power of wind and water, swimming pools shattered like clay pots, trailers ripped apart, in the streets, air conditioners, and more. Decks undermined, floors torn open, and a sprinkling of residents ready to affirm Hugo's force. Our bedroom um, bed is sitting right in the middle of uh, downstairs apartment all the way up from the penthouse on the second floor. I have no idea how it got there, but it's there. When I saw the bed, I, what was running through my mind is if we tried to stay, we'd be dead. In Myrtle Beach itself, mile after mile of battered buildings, clearly many millions of dollars in damage here. And after many hours of waiting by homeowners to see it for themselves, the highways were opened at last after 3 o'clock this afternoon. Now people continue to stream into Myrtle Beach, and they, as the people in Charleston do, face a curfew, this one at 8 o'clock. Again, this town likely to be clogged with a lot of people on the beaches and the streets after 8 o'clock. We'll have to see how authorities control that problem and how officials solve the many, many physical problems facing Myrtle Beach, likely to take at least a year to correct. I'm Jim Upshaw, reporting live from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. What is it that surprised you the most? It's just the extent, the, the extent of the damage. It's just, you've got cinder block buildings blown down around in the back. You've got plate glass windows and roofs missing. I, I didn't think it would do it all this. Charleston residents like Carl Branham tried all day to make sense out of this unbelievable scene. A majestic, history-filled southern city left in shambles by the largest hurricane this part of the country has seen in memory. Hugo ripped up or tore apart anything in his way, leaving Charleston battered and without power. This area you see here behind me, this is the barrier islands. They sit right on the Atlantic and they were hit very, very hard by Hurricane Hugo. But there's an additional problem. The only way in, this bridge, is out and residents who left the island yesterday are now stuck on the wrong side not knowing if their homes lost the battle with hugo the waiting is tough but after last night's storm there has come some new perspectives uh, as uh, long as you can get your family out and uh, they're all safe and really that's all that's important and uh, of course it, it would like to be uh, perfect when you got back in you haven't lost anything but you know hell you can always buy wood you can always buy sheetrock and uh, just hope you have enough insurance no matter what Frank Peacock finds when he returns to Isle of Palms, he does have insurance to cover the damage. You know, not all the optimism in the world that people have here is going to turn the lights on, though. Their power is still out in Charleston. It's expected it's going to take at least two weeks to restore half of that power. So there's still a long road to recovery here. That's it from Charleston. We're now going to go to John Valeris, who's down in Cape Coral. John, I understand that you were in the eye of the hurricane. We were down below. You were up there and had a fairly rough ride. That's true, Mark. Uh, last night at this time, I was well on my way into the eye of Hurricane Hugo. I was on a flight with the Hurricane Hunters, and I was able to broadcast live an exclusive broadcast right from the eye of Hurricane Hugo last night. Now, we're going to take you into that plane, and you get a first-hand look for yourself as we go eyeball to eyeball with Hurricane Hugo. At just past 6 p.m., we took off to meet the hurricane as it aimed itself to charge onto the mainland. The men on board with us, scientists who brave fierce elements for a living, their goal is to get inside the storm and use this wealth of equipment to send a life-saving information back to the ground. This piece of weather equipment is a probe, very important in the research mission of Hugo. We'll be dropping two or three of these during the actual penetration of Hugo. What this does is measure temperature, humidity, pressure, and the most important item, wind speed. When these probes are laid into the hurricane with precision, accurate data jumps back to computers as it is radioed back to the hurricane control center on the ground. But all of us, men and equipment, took a pounding to get what we came for. You're going to see quite a bit of uh, convective activity tonight. If you look at the radar, you can see the, uh, the red areas on the radar are going to be the convective activity. And there's quite a bit of it in front of us. So it looks like in a few minutes, maybe three, four minutes, we're going to get into some uh, little rough riding, as you, I guess you would say, in your business. <laughs> That's a good way to put it, yes. Soon it became a weatherman's dream. Well, my dream anyway, 
to be inside a force of nature. It's an unbelievable experience. Just looking at it, you see like a wall of clouds encircling, uh, completely encompassing the plane. You can see the bands of clouds wrapping around, forming the eyes around the, we call that the wall. I grabbed a phone and as night fell, arranged to describe live and firsthand to our viewers what I had just witnessed. And the, uh, the eye is going to be making landfall within the next hour at Charleston. The outer edge of the northwest eye wall is now on the beach. Mission completed, successful? Oh, definitely. Uh, five eye penetrations, the last one we fixed the storm within about three miles of the beach. And that's, uh, we don't fly them over land, so that's far enough. In Coral Gables at the National Hurricane Center, John Bolaris, Channel 2 News. Now back to Brian and Michelle in New York. John, a question for you. I know it was rocky uh, part of the flight. Was it worse trying to get into the eye in the airplane, or was it calm once you were in there? That said, getting into the eye was the main impact area. Crossing that eye wall is the roughest part of the storm. And once you penetrate the eye, Brian, it's very tranquil once you're in the middle. It's kind of calm. But once you get back down to the eye wall, you get knocked around left to right, up and down. It's kind of like a roller coaster ride. We're up there seven hours, so just picture a seven hour roller coaster ride and you get the feeling. All right, John, appreciate your report. We're already beginning to feel the effects of Hugo here at home. Heavy winds and high tides. Wind and all that stuff. Autumn will arrive at 920 tonight, but we are going to be spared from Hugo. Fortunately, the remnants of Hugo are now moving up through uh, eastern sections of Ohio, bringing the heavy rain there. We've just seen some wind and a few light showers tonight, and that's it. Hugo will pass north of us, and our concern is actually going to be from this cold front that will swing rapidly in from the west to bring showers and thunderstorms in our area by, uh, looks like tomorrow afternoon, and there could be heavy into tomorrow night. Temperatures now basically in the 70s, and you see the wind gusts. That's been the story today. The wind gusts are still along the coast up to between 35 and 40 miles per hour, so a gale warning is up. Here's a satellite movie loop. If Hugo had took uh, the original course up through the eastern part of the Appalachians, we would have been in a lot of trouble. But you see that everything went to the west, and we stayed into this sort of drier area with just the gusty winds uh, in our area today. And the radar confirms that, too. Look at the showers that are just scattered across our region tonight, and the heavy rain is back through western Pennsylvania and Ohio. So we were spared a lot of uh, catastrophic weather conditions that could have happened tonight. Here's the forecast, then, for us overnight. Gale warnings are still up for the coast. It's going to be windy, but just a chance of a shower here and there. 72 in the city, 65 to 70 north and west. Now, the flood watch has been dropped for our entire area tonight, but it goes up tomorrow for Rockland and Westchester counties in northern Jersey as the rain will arrive tomorrow afternoon. 80 degrees for the high. It's going to be windy tomorrow, breezy and cooler Sunday, 62, and dry on Monday. Morning, Coran. Wow, that's, a, that's good. We got away easy so That's far. Fox News at 7. Thanks for being with us, everyone. I'm Ari Pope. And I'm Koran Mahalik. We'll see you on the 10 o'clock news. Current Affairs next. Good night. Well, John Koran, for the most part, we are in the clear. We just still have some gusty winds outside. There have been a few showers this evening, uh, but we were very fortunate. And as you see, as I discussed the path of Hugo, why we were so very fortunate in uh, our weather events that took place today. First of all, we'll take you back towards when Hugo was going through uh, the Caribbean islands. At Guadalupe, it was a 140-mile-an-hour storm. It hit Puerto Rico, it was a 130-mile-an-hour storm. Then it began to weaken. We thought at this point it was going to head towards the Bahamas, and it looped out more into the Atlantic and reached its weakest point out here when it went to 105 miles an hour. Hit the Gulf Stream waters just off the east coast and exploded yesterday, slammed into Charleston with 135-mile-an-hour winds. Now, at this point, we were expecting the storm to come just, just basically east of the Appalachians and into our neighborhood at this time. And if it had taken that course, we would have been seeing very strong winds right now and probably lots and lots of rainfall. But fortunately, it drifted further to the west and now is actually almost up towards the uh, uh, Canadian border, still causing a lot of rain up there. But we were very, very, very lucky. You can see on the satellite movie loop from today as well, the storm that started out this morning after it went through South Carolina, just moving rapidly to the northeast. That's accelerating now at almost 40 to 50 miles per hour. And you can see we were in the quiet zone. Now, just because Hugo is moving away, that doesn't mean we're completely out of the woods yet for our weather troubles, because look to the west. There's a cold front in here, and this front means business. It's going to snow behind that front in the Great Lakes uh, for tomorrow. And when that front gets here tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow night, we could see some showers and some pretty heavy rainfall. I'll be back with that and the complete forecast a little bit later on. John? All right, Nick, the folks in our town are doing their part to help the people who were hurt by Hugo. Police officers, Parks Department workers, and equipment supplies are on their way to Puerto Rico. Donald Trump donated a plane to take City Council President Andrew Stein to meet with Puerto Rico's governor. The plane was packed with supplies donated by private companies around here. Around town this weekend, telethons and a walkathon will be raising money for the relief effort.
President Bush immediately declared South Carolina a disaster area, so federal money can help the folks with their cleanup. But it's a different story in Puerto Rico. Patrick McGrath tells us why they'll be having a tougher fight recovering from Hugo. The federal government was expecting the worst in South Carolina. After seeing the devastation that Hurricane Hugo caused to Puerto Rico and St. Croix, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, had a disaster declaration ready for the president's signature. The declaration authorizes the federal government to provide temporary housing, grants, low-cost loans, and join in cost-sharing arrangements with local governments. It will be a while before officials have an estimate of the damage in South Carolina, and for the moment, federal efforts are still focused on Puerto Rico and St. Croix. Relief supplies are being airlifted to the islands, although the airports are not able to operate normally because of damage and lack of electrical power. FEMA says St. Croix is in particularly bad shape. But St. Croix, uh, Croix is probably the most extreme damage that we have seen in many, many years. Not to say that what hit the mainland should be in any way diminished, but St. Croix is devastated, absolutely devastated. Ninety percent of all the telephone pole, poles in, in the St. Croix, they're just down. They're devastated. The trees are down. You know, the major buildings are are blown away. Many houses are very seriously impacted. FEMA is sending four 750 kilowatt generators to St. Croix to begin restoring electrical power. Another pressing problem for St. Croix is an oil spill. Storage tanks on the island have been seriously damaged and are leaking. And if an earthen dam gives way, a million gallons of oil could do serious damage to the pristine waters and beaches of this tourist mecca. In Puerto Rico, the government was us. looking for candles all over town last well, night. Well, if they came right at us, birthday candles. <laughs> yeah, you see, now you can use them for something else down the road. Maybe a nice intimate dinner. That's a good idea. We like those kind of surprises. See, we, we double duty here in the weather department. We, 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 we take care of your social life, too. Uh, but I tell you what, our uh, weather was really lucky today. We really uh, got spared from some major disastrous weather that could have occurred from Hugo. But our troubles are not over yet, as you'll see what I mean in just a minute. Hugo may not be a part of our picture anymore, but there is another change coming. 78 and 73 today, oh, about four hundredths of an inch of rain in the city. Really nothing tremendous. There wasn't really a lot of rain anywhere in the area today because Hugo moved too far to the west. 74 degrees right now, the humidity 97%, wind out of the south, still gusting to 25 and some coastal areas still gusting over 30. The pressure 29.73, and it continues to fall. Okay, temperatures across the area, basically in the 70s. It's very tropical outside. The humidity is out there. We're still cloudy. And uh, again, ranging from 75 at Bridgeport and Centerport back to 75 at Hawthorne. And 79, the warm spot tonight in Newark, 69 up in Vernon Township. Here's the radar, and look how far west the storm is with nothing really on top of our area. And that storm is accelerating to the northeast now at 40 miles per hour. And you can see the heavy rain moving through western New York and the showers back in through parts of uh, Kentucky. Here's a satellite movie loop. You can watch the storm tracking right up towards uh, Canada now. And we were spared. Again, we were on the eastern side of the storm, but <laughs> too far to the east, and thus these, even these little showers offshore never made it. But look to the west. See these line of clouds here? That's going to be the big weather story. Hugo will pull away and head out towards the Canadian Maritimes, but this front is going to be mean business in our area because look at the temperature contrast. In the 80s, ahead of the frontal system to the 50s for highs today. They're in the 30s, by the way, now across the upper peninsula of uh, Michigan, and there's snow right across the Canadian border. Can you believe it? The first night of fall, and it's already snowing up here. Well, the front is going to be pushing closer towards us tomorrow, and thus we'll be in the tropical air. And when you go from temperatures here in the 70s and 80s back to the 50s and 40s, something is going to give. And we're going to have some pretty big rainstorms, I think, tomorrow afternoon, and especially tomorrow night into early Sunday. And it's still going to be kind of windy the next couple of days. So gale warning for the coast. Windy tonight, just a chance of a shower. 72 in the city, 65 to 70 most of the places. Tomorrow, looking for just a bit of sun in the morning. The driest time will be in the morning, but then the showers coming in in the afternoon and becoming heavier late in the day and tomorrow night. High of 80. Look at Sunday. <laughs> what happened to summertime? 62 degrees, partly sunny, and uh, we'll be staying in the 60s Monday and Tuesday. So, so we're okay with Hugo. Now there's yes. another system coming. Now through. there's another system that will make it even worse tomorrow. Happy autumn. And now autumn <laughs> is here, and you'll feel it on Sunday. I guarantee it. Okay. Thanks very much. Well, we lucked out. It looks like. Well, if you see the weather was 79 degrees at one o'clock, 58 degrees at three o'clock, and it's 50 degrees now. A drop of 21 degrees in two hours between one and three. A very strong cold front moving through. We have a flood watch in northern New Jersey, Rockland, Westchester County, but I don't think it's going to happen. I think they will lift that because the showers now are pretty much 
dissipating across northwest New Jersey. Some light to moderate showers. They'll be passing through next couple of hours, but I don't think we'll get to see the flooding. But we do have a gale warning. Very strong winds around a tremendously strong high-pressure system out in the Midwest. These winds are really howling in here. Northwesterly winds gusting up to 40, 50 miles per hour, bringing in that very cold air, record-breaking cold out here. That's going to be with us for tomorrow. But just look out for a few showers this evening. But the main story, windy and turning sharply colder. I'll have more details a little bit later on in this broadcast. Okay, John, we'll see you in a little bit. Well, residents of the areas hit worse by Hurricane Hugo are still trying to put their lives back together tonight. And while they clean up the devastation, there is a new problem cropping up. Long lines are forming for essentials in the Charleston area. Water and ice are high on the priority list. Car owners are finding it difficult to fill up their tanks with gasoline, and just getting the food they need takes hours of waiting. As the damage estimates soar to $1 billion, Channel 2's Mark Schumacher reports on the emotional task ahead for the victims of the fierce storm. Monumental is about the best way to describe the task ahead for Charleston residents. Before anyone here can even think about rebuilding after Hurricane Hugo, they have to clear away the debris and the memories of that brutal Friday morning. Charlestonians like Jim Joyner have their work cut out for them. I think it's going to be months, you know, into probably years, you know, getting everything straightened out where we can clear out and get started over again. It's going to be years rebuilding for the city of Charleston. It's hard to say how long it's going to take to clean up, but they're estimating it's going to cost about a billion dollars. There is, however, one thing that Charleston, South Carolina has going for it, and that's a strong heritage. There is a resiliency here that comes from deep family roots and a long Southern history. Civil War certainly is a good example of how it pulled Charleston together, and I think this is comparable to that. There'll be uh, some friendships made that people had no idea would ever be there. Bonds are being made. People who survived this trauma have been linked by common needs. First was survival. Now it's recovery. They see now how much they need each other. Because everybody's in the same boat. You may be a millionaire, but you still don't have any power. Or you may not have a house. That's right. It's, uh, it's all the same. James Hardy is a lifelong Carolinan, a Southerner who believes Charleston is built on the strong character of its people. He says it will be rebuilt on that same solid foundation. I, I don't hear in your voice that you think at all that this is going to keep this town down at all. No, no, never will. Been here too, too many years. It's going to bounce back? Oh, yes, it'll bounce back. Physically, there is little doubt that Charleston will rebuild. What about emotionally? How long is it going to take? Uh, emotionally, most people ain't going to forget it. All right. In Charleston, South Carolina, I'm Mark Schumacher, Channel 2 News. And here in our area, an outpouring of concern from the Latino community and others for the thousands devastated when Hugo hit Puerto Rico. Volunteers collected money and marched to encourage community members to donate supplies. Mayoral candidate Rudolph Giuliani was on hand as marchers, waving Puerto Rican flags, vowed the effort is just beginning. And in El Barrio, Puerto Rican movie star Raul Julia and city councilwoman Carolyn Maloney held a fundraising concert. Another drive is set for tomorrow. Week of Hugo with that low pressure system moving away up through the Canadian Maritimes, high pressure out over the Atlantic. That brings in a southerly flow of air. And what that also does is allow a lot of moisture on top of us. There's a pretty strong cold front that's going to drop temperatures at least about 15 degrees from the highs we've been seeing. And as that cold air pushes in, look for showers and thunderstorms tomorrow afternoon on into tomorrow night. So again, flash flood watches in effect for Rockland, Westchester and northern New Jersey. For tonight, the tropical storm force wind warning will be lifted. We look for showers and thunderstorms still hanging around. Temperatures in the mid to upper 60s. For tomorrow morning, it'll be windy with variably cloudy skies. Scattered showers mid 60s to about 70. Showers and thunderstorms, again, the flash flood watch for Rockland, Westchester, northern New Jersey, mid 70s to about 80 degrees. And the extended outlook, look at those temperatures taking a bit of a tumble after that cold front moves through. We are looking for showers and thunderstorms storms as we go on into Sunday. Monday, fair and 65. Tuesday, partly cloudy, 65. And then on Wednesday, variably cloudy, scattered showers, and a temperature of 67 degrees. So a lot of wet weather. Hugo didn't turn out to be too much, but at least 
we can have to have all the problems that they had down there in the south. Everybody have a nice weekend. Chuck and Sue? All right, Al, thank you. Thank you, you too. One yep. to 200 homes wiped out by the storm out on the Barrier Islands, which took the brunt of the wind and storm surge from Hurricane Hugo. But nearly everyone here has been affected by the power outage. 75% of power knocked out here. No water, no lights, no refrigeration, no cooking, no stores open. And it looks like it's going to take two to three weeks before that power comes on. In Charleston, this is Steve Handelsman, News 4. Back to you, Ralph. All right, Steve, thank you. Well, we certainly did a lot better here, didn't we? Oh, we were quite lucky. The storm took a pretty, pretty quick turn to the west and moved far enough inland that it really didn't bother us that much. We had a little bit in the way of winds and a couple of down power lines here, but nothing like that. As far as our weather goes today, the big news, boy, it feels like fallout. The temperature, if you have not been out since 2 o'clock this afternoon, has dropped some 20 to 30 degrees, now in the 50s. So look outside right now. We have mostly cloudy skies, a few showers persisting out there. The afternoon high temperature just before the 2 o'clock hour at 81. The current temperature is the low at 50. Not much rain in the city. And there's your sunrise and sunset for tomorrow. Now, as I mentioned, 50 degrees, relative humidity 68%. Northwesterly winds at 16, gusting to 25, and the barometer is rising. Keep those umbrellas handy. They will be needed at least throughout the next couple of hours right now across the area. Still rather windy. We have gale warnings out all along the coastal areas for winds tonight between 20 and 30 miles per hour, gusting up to 40. This afternoon at 2 o'clock, a wind gust reported at LaGuardia at 40 miles per hour. But the big story, look at these temperatures down from 70 and 80 degrees this afternoon. Now in the 40s and 50s. Tonight, I think even possibility of the 30s. Here's the uh, radar situation. You can still see some showers holding to the west. Those showers will move through later on tonight. The satellite picture, early in the day, we had clear skies. It was later this afternoon. The front came through at 2. Behind it, an awful lot of cold air. This is an Arctic front. The first one of the season, and boy, it'll drop the temperatures tonight down into the 30s and 40s. It'll be windy. It'll be chilly. Overnight low here in the city at about 48 degrees. For tomorrow, mostly sunny. Don't let it fool you. We're going to creep to 61 degrees, quite a bit below normal for this time of year. Extended forecast temperatures really not getting up uh, too much into the mid-60s. The upper 60s by Tuesday, cloudy on Tuesday, Wednesday some showers, and Thursday back to some sunshine, 64 degrees. You might even need the coat for the first time this oh year with an God. afternoon. Yeah, big change around here too. But kind of in the wake of Hugo, this Hugo went through late, uh, late last night through Western PA, but now the cold front trailing Hugo is going through at this hour, and you know it. You walked through three seasons this afternoon. It was 80 at noon. It was 58 at three, and it's down to 50 now from summer to fall to winter. 68% is the humidity. Winds gusty out of the northwest, 14 gusting to 23. Pressure on the rise. We have cloudy skies, and the latest radar is showing a band of showers now stretching from uh, northwest New Jersey down through, uh, up through the uh, Catskills. It's moving quickly to the east. We have a flash flood watch for northern New Jersey, Rockland, Westchester counties for the potential of some flash flooding, but I do not think that will happen. The showers are beginning to dissipate. Look at the temperatures at this hour, 45 degrees in Travis. It was 81 degrees there at noon, 44 degrees in Nyack, and you're not going to believe this, 39 degrees in northwest New Jersey, and they reported some snow in Binghamton. <laughs> strong, and I mean strong cold front going through as we speak. It's going to be whipping off the coast behind it. Very cold air pouring in as we speak. Temperatures tonight will be in the 40s. will be in the 30s across the northern and western suburbs. Some record low temperatures may be set tomorrow. A very cool day, some 10 to 15 degrees below normal. This will be the high tomorrow in the city, 63, 50 for the northern and western suburbs. Forecast for tonight. Those showers will be ending windy, perhaps some record cold temperatures. City 40 to 45, the record low is 40, down into the 30s north and west. Gale warnings for the coast, flash flood watches north and west. Tomorrow, mostly sunny. You'll notice some patchy clouds in the afternoon, but the main story, windy and very cool, 58 to 63. The normal high is uh, 73, and by Monday, more sunshine in the upper 60s. So a cool wave in full progress right now. Okay, John, thanks. Well, finally tonight, remembering the man who set the tune. And in Charleston, South Carolina, a city with no lights, no running water, and a serious shortage of food. As Brian Wilson reports, it may be days before the situation gets much better. Residents of storm-ravaged Charleston, South Carolina, are now beginning the slow process of cleaning up. The days ahead could well be the most difficult of their lives. 
This woman lives on an island near Charleston and still doesn't know if her home survived the brutal winds of Hugo. I just want to know if the house is there. I, don't, I have no idea if I own anything anymore. The damage is so bad in downtown Charleston that City Hall has been temporarily moved to a nearby suburb. The National Guard can still be seen on every street corner in downtown Charleston. Overnight, there were sporadic reports of looting, but for the most part, the city has remained orderly. As the cleanup continues, we're finding that in the historic sections of Charleston, the old houses survived quite well. Minor damage, but they'll be all right. The real problem today is survival. Here's today's headline in the local paper. Food, water, top priorities. Everywhere you look today, there were lines. Lines to get ice. Lines at the only operating restaurant. But the biggest lines were at the few service stations using portable generators to pump gasoline. Those who couldn't wait for two hours for fuel ended up paying exorbitant prices to those who did. <laughs> the Red Cross is now on the scene in Charleston. With Hugo damage stretching from the Caribbean to the Carolinas, officials are asking for help. We're just now doing damage assessment in Puerto Rico. Uh, we're, we're getting on to St. Croix and St. Thomas and, and the other islands there, and there's just total destruction. It'll be months, years of, of reconstruction. Now we're just starting that same process here, and here in Charleston, it doesn't look all that much better. It will be weeks before there is some semblance of normalcy in Charleston, but longtime residents say the city will rebuild as it has in the past. The city is devastating. It's such a beautiful, beautiful city. But I know it'll come back. Somebody told me that this was like this in 1928. So if they did that then, we can survive now. Brian Wilson, Fox News, Charleston, South Carolina. Hugo's death toll now stands at 40, 24 in the Caribbean, and 16 in the U.S. And emergency crews are working round the clock to bring drinkable water and electricity to devastated areas of Puerto Rico. In St. Croix, the National Guard now confirms that some guardsmen took part in the looting sprees there after Hugo hit the Virgin Islands. And Interior Secretary Manuel Lujan led a congressional delegation to Puerto Rico on a fact-finding trip. The lawmakers say they'll also investigate why federal assistance only began arriving four or five days after Hugo struck. And all around our area, concerned New Yorkers organized events to aid those devastated by the hurricane. In the Bronx, a walkathon to raise money for Puerto Rican relief efforts brought out mayoral hopefuls Rudy Giuliani and David Dinkins. More events are planned for tomorrow, including an all-star benefit concert at the Nassau Coliseum. One man in 40 mile an hour winds blew into the suburb from Putnam to the north to Suffolk out east. Trees were knocked down on Long Island and as many as 80,000 homes had their power knocked out. Some folks were also left in the dark in Westchester and in Greene County, upstate. And now that Hugo's gone, we're getting the cold shoulder. Here's Alan Casper. I'll tell you, it was scary. I lived down along the Jersey Shore, and uh, it was unbelievable last night between, say, 9 and 10 o'clock and, oh, maybe 1, 2, 3 in the morning. It was gusting f even 50 miles an hour. But fall arrived around 8 o'clock or a little after last night. Didn't seem like it, did it? But how about today? Unbelievable when it dropped some 20 and 30 degrees in just a couple of hours from 81, a high here in town earlier, to the current temperature which is right now sitting at 48 degrees. We did get down to 47 a little bit earlier, 48 now. A gusty northwest wind in some communities, gustier than that, and a rising barometer. And I certainly can say tonight, this is fall. Look at the temperatures everywhere. In the 40s, we can find a 50 at Islip, low 50s out at West Hampton, and even way down at Millville, Atlantic City, it's in the 40s as well. Satellite shows where our air is coming from. Clouds produce some sprinkles of wet snow and sleet out across portions of Pennsylvania, but the radar shows that it's cleaning out. We're going to see weather improving. Eventually, our weather may come from moisture that's uh, just building up in western Canada, combining with lingering moisture in the southeast that may provide some problems for, this, for us down the road. Drying out, clearing out slowly, a gusty northwest wind feeling colder than the 40s. Tomorrow, when you get up here in the city at 8 o'clock, around 50, windy too, fresh, clean air. Temperatures not much above the upper 50s to near 60. And as we look for boaters that are be going to be going out, many people still fishing at least, northwest to north, 20 to 30 knots early, easing later rough seas. The water temperatures may fall off briefly with this cold air into the 60s over the next day or so. Taking a look down the road, Monday still looks really nice, 60 to 65 with mostly sunny skies. That area of moisture to our south and to the way to the west may provide some rain or showers late Tuesday, Tuesday night into early Wednesday. Chilly, chilly stuff. Here's Steve.
break out to the old wedding cake tonight. I can tell you that. We have some frost in the northern and western suburbs for the first time this season. Shot looking down Park Avenue through a tunnel, courtesy of Alex Padilla. And lo and behold, some light at the end of the tunnel. Temperature in the city at this hour, 59 degrees. Humidity, 42%. Winds northwest at 9. Pressure on the rise. We have clear skies. It's clear, crisp, and cool this evening. Temperatures for the most part in the upper 50s to around 60. 57 Nyack, 57 Cold Spring. Satellite, big clear skies over us. Big high pressure system. See the big bright white down here? Low pressure percolating in the Gulf of Mexico. That will move up here during the day Tuesday with a pretty good shot of rain. In the meantime, high pressure in control for tomorrow and tonight. Tonight, the big chill, the suburbs, northern and western suburbs down between 30 and 35. Lots of sunshine tomorrow, but still quite cool. Highs tomorrow only topping off near 68, mid 60s surrounding suburbs. The normal high is 74, so still quite cool. Maybe a mild trend as we move into next weekend. Clear cold weather for tonight. Some frost across the interior suburbs, 40 to 45 in the city, 35 to 40 on the island, and 30 to 35 north and west. Tomorrow, sunny and cool on a southeasterly wind, 64 to 68. And the five-day look ahead for Monday, sunny. Tuesday, that chance of rain, probably a soaking rain on Tuesday. Wednesday, we clear out big, cool Canadian high for Thursday. Friday, look at that, bright sunshine near 70. And maybe that will hold true for next weekend with readings in the 70s with lots of sunshine. We do hope. We do hope. <laughs> hope. In New York. <laughs> Certainly. Uh, I like it today. It was fabulous. great. Great day. You and I were talking earlier about how the temperature drop that we had uh, an experience yesterday, some 20 to 30 degrees in just a couple of hours. And we only made it to the lower 60s today, and that's in the city. Elsewhere, it was in the upper 50s. Outside right now, it's currently uh, 52 degrees. Humidity is 61%. The barometer is 30.36, and it's rising, and the winds are northwesterly at 9 miles an hour, but that's in Central Park. Winds are virtually calm in much of suburbia. The satellite view that we see shows clear skies here across all of the northeast on southward into uh, the Washington Baltimore area but these are clouds moisture that's beginning to lurk to the south and move back northward and we'll talk about that in just a second temperature wise rushing the season I guess so it's a little bit above in some communities what it was at this time last night uh, Newark was in the upper 40s there 54 LaGuardia 56 look at Islip all the way down to 46 and it's in the 30s in some of the cool spots most of Jersey, at least in terms of the official reporting stations, are the same. Full satellite view shows a cold front that's going to be moving southeastward and combined with the moisture that we see here down in the Gulf of Mexico streaming northward. National Hurricane Center is going to send a reconnaissance aircraft unless they cancel it at the last minute for this area of disturbed weather, although as we look at it, despite the fact that the ship reports and buoy reports are reporting winds up to 30 and 35 miles an hour for the moment, it seems to be non-tropical in nature due to the fact that there's a low pressure system aloft here in the upper atmosphere that's probably inhibiting tropical development. But all these clouds and rain that you see here now down in Georgia and South Carolina will be sweeping northward in our backyard by this time tomorrow night. Overnight tonight, skies will be clear, unseasonably cold. Temperatures will be dropping into the 40s here in the city and the 30s in many of the suburbs and some of the northwest suburbs. There could be some frost, as you see there. Tomorrow, another beautiful day, but high clouds will be coming in. And by late in the day, we'll be clouding up, and we have a rainy day scheduled for most of Tuesday, perhaps beginning late tomorrow night, and then another windy, sunny, and chilly day on Wednesday. Here's Steve and Rosanna. Thanks, Alan. Afternoon, when this cold front hit, were you outside? Yeah, I, I really don't remember where I was Saturday afternoon, Glenn. I haven't had enough coffee yet. <laughs> you must not have been outside then. I'll tell you, there were people, I was out to see a movie, there were people out in shorts, and Saturday afternoon, it was in the 80s. By the time they came out of the movie, the wind chills in the 30s. They're going, what happened here? We had a strong cold front come through.